Hello, welcome to the FNPD Techniques video for Lesion Sterilization Tissue Repair, or LSTR. LSTR is a procedure for necrotic primary teeth that usually requires no instrumentation of the root canals or filling of the canals, but instead includes the placement of an antibiotic mixture in the pulp chamber to disinfect the root canal. This is an updated flow chart from Cole's 2024 publication on pulp therapy, and we're going to follow the non-vital track for a tooth that has irreversible pulpitis or necrosis. Yes, pulp therapy is indicated. Is it restorable? Yes. Is there root resorption, external, internal? Yes. And that's going to put us at the LSTR track. That's going to use a three-mix medication paste. Looking at the decision between LSTR or pulpectomy, we are looking at teeth that would have a diagnosis of pulpal necrosis. So this treatment would not be appropriate for teeth that have a reversible pulpitis or even an irreversible pulpitis. And looking at current publications, pulpectomy is still preferred as the non-vital treatment of choice in teeth without root resorption that are expected to last longer than 24 months over LSTR. In teeth with minimal root or internal or resorption that are still restorable and are to be maintained for less than 12 months or less, LSTR is the preferential treatment over pulpectomy. In teeth that are non-restorable or severely resorbed, extraction would be the treatment of choice. The main benefit of LSTR as a therapy when compared to pulpectomy is that it takes less chair-side time. So it is an ability to preserve a non-vital necrotic primary tooth compared to a pulp that would require less chair side time, so may be beneficial in patients who have more limited cooperation. The LSTR is the preferred method over pulpectomy in non-vital teeth with root resorption when a tooth needs to be maintained in the arch for 12 months or less. This is when LSTR would be the more selective treatment over a pulpectomy. So now we're going to look at the actual LSTR medications. First medication is iodoform, which is based off the United States Pharmacopeia USP powder 0.5 gram aliquot. This is assigned 180 day beyond use date based off of the USP. The next medication is the 1 to 1 to 1 mixture of metronidazole, ciprofloxacin, and clindamycin. A 1 to 1 mixture of polyethylene glycol and propylene glycol is utilized to help mix the dry ingredients. Next step is going to be to discuss the actual LSTR procedure. The first step is going to be administering local anesthetic and achieving isolation either with rubber dam or an alternative. We're still going to remove caries and access the pulp similar to that of a pulpotomy or a pulpectomy. We want to excavate any existing restorative material. In my experience doing LSTR, I find the chamber and the corresponding canals to sometimes still have partial vitality of one of the canals, meaning that maybe the mesial canal or the distal canal will still be vital or hyperemic, but the palatal or the distal canal would be grossly necrotic. I have also seen dry necrosis or partial necrosis in the canals as well. In those situations, I'll try to remove the necrotic or the grossly necrotic tissue because in my mind, there is a higher bacterial burden present in that tissue. To accomplish this, I'll use 1-3% to sodium hypochlorite in a soaked cotton pellet or a side vented syringe to remove the organic debris. Next, I'll dry any areas as indicated with paper points. This would be the canals that were irrigated or treated with sodium hypochlorite. Any areas of hemorrhage that were controlled were typically done with dry cotton pellets. After drying the chamber and canals, I will then expand each orifice by 1 millimeter width and 2 millimeter depth with a slow speed round burr. This can be accomplished with a size 4 slow speed round burr. Then the wells and pulp chamber are scrubbed with 35 to 37 percent phosphoric acid etching and it's rinsed and dried. This is to open up any tubules and also to open up the cribriform like structure of the pulpal floor in a pediatric tooth. Then the LSTR 3 mix paste is prepared and placed over the wells and floor of the pulp chamber. Some type of material is utilized to cover the pulp chamber, like IRM or a glass ionomer cement. A full coverage restoration is then placed over the prepared tooth. This is pictorially showing the primary tooth, the permanent successor, the superficial restoration, which for me is usually a stainless steel crown, the glass ionomer cement covering the medication, and the wells where the 3 mix paste is placed. 
placed in. I also placed a chart demonstrating the diameter in millimeters of the different sized round burrs that can be utilized to make wells. I typically use a number four slow speed round burr to create my wells. This is a video of how I typically mix the 3M paste. I'll usually start with the iota form. This for me comes in three different containers. One has the iota form, one has the triple antibiotic paste, and the other has the propylene glycol. And then I will mix triple antibiotic paste, and then I'll add the propylene glycol in small amounts until I reach a honey-like consistency or almost like a slightly doughy consistency that I can flow or place inside of the chamber of the pulp and into the orifices of the tooth. Now we're going to look at some case documentation. The first case is tooth T or number 85. The video and photograph showing the total necrosis of the mesial canal and partial necrosis of the distal as heme can still be visualized in the distal canal orifice. 3% sodium hypochlorite was utilized to remove necrosed tissue and achieve hemostasis. The canals and chamber were appropriately dried and phosphoric acid etch 37% was applied to the orifice and chamber of the pulpal cavity. The phosphoric acid was rinsed and dried, and the LSTR mix was placed in the orifice and chamber, followed by glass animer cement, and a final restoration of a stainless steel crown was placed. This is a three-month follow-up showing bony fill-in around tooth number T or 85, and additionally, the patient was symptom-free at recall. Second case is also tooth number T or 85. This is showing the caries and decay excavation, showing now orifices and pulp chamber. After the tooth was phosphoric acid and dried, the LSTR 3-mix paste was applied, and the tooth was restored with a stainless steel crown. This is that three-month recall showing resolution of symptoms and some bony filling around the distal root. This last tooth is showing tooth number J, or 65, receiving LSTR therapy and the similar steps reviewed during all previous cases. 